Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down at championship weekend in college football. Of course, please like, comment, share the videos, and subscribe right here at the voice of college football. We've got Steve Helwick on the line to talk the Mid-American Conference Championship game, which takes place Friday night in Detroit. We've got uh, Miami taking on Central Michigan. The Red Hawks come in at 7-5 uh, and five overall, 6-2 and two in the MAC with a one-game division championship win over OU. Kent and Buffalo, Central Michigan as well at six and two in the MAC at eight and four. Steve, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. Uh, rivalry weekend was really fun. I thought we got a lot of good games from the Iron Bowl to the Commonwealth Cup. And now looking forward to conference championship weekend, there should be some good ones all across the board. Oregon, Utah, notably, the MAC championship game we're about to get into. A few others, the American one for the Cotton Bowl and Georgia LSU, which has a lot of playoff implications. Tons of good games across the board this weekend. Yeah, Steve, as we dive into the MAC, uh, something that strikes me, of course, are the division standings on both sides and the balance across the board. Uh, outside of Akron, no real awful teams, uh, teams beating each other. Nobody uh, escaped the season with a uh, less than two losses in the conference. And again, the Red Hawks and the Chippewas emerge with one game leads in their divisions to meet for the championship. Uh, going back to what you expected at the beginning of the season and what's, what most media was looking forward to in the MAC, how does this uh, stand up against uh, preseason prognostications? I do not think anybody picked this matchup to happen. And everyone picked Ohio. Every year, it's Ohio's due, Ohio's due. And Frank Solich has been such a great coach, and he's the best coach in MAC history in terms of wins. And Ohio could arguably be the best team in the MAC for what, three years running, but somehow they just don't appear in the MAC championship game. And they were the preseason favorites. They haven't won a MAC title since 1968. They finished six and six, uh, winning their last two games in dominant fashion. And I fully believe that they could be the best team in the MAC. They had a tough schedule and. The loss to Miami in a uh, midweek matching game on college football's 150th anniversary anniversary is what ultimately did them in. And that's how the Red Hawks, they, they beat Ohio, they beat Buffalo. That's how they won the MAC East was they just had to win those two games really to secure those tiebreakers despite losing to Ball State on the last week of the season and losing to Western Michigan early. Secure those tiebreakers in a MAC year like this and you'll be in good shape. The MAC West... I don't think I've ever seen more parity in a division before. All six teams in the MAC West almost went bowl eligible. Northern Illinois, who was the d defending conference champion, was the only one who didn't, going five and seven and nearly attaining that. But Eastern Michigan six and six, Toledo six and six, Western Michigan seven and five, Central Michigan's eight and four, and oh, Ball State two teams in the MAC West didn't go. Bull eligible. They're also five and seven, but still that's remarkable parity with every team getting between five and eight wins. And I don't think anybody expected Central Michigan to be that team on top. They were one in 11 last year, and we have to give a shout out to Jim McElwain. I know McElwain takes a lot of heat for what he did at Florida, but the reality is he's a great coach. He did well at Colorado State in his first two years at Florida. He became the first coach ever in SEC history to go to the SEC title game in his first two years coaching an SEC program. Gets fired in his third year at uh, midseason, then goes to Cent Michigan wide receivers coach, does well there, and then goes to Central Michigan and turns them around from 1 and 11 to 8 and 4 within a year. It's remarkable. He was named MAC Coach of the Year today for very good reason. And he's now coaching for a MAC title, Central Michigan's first one since 2009 when Dan LeFevre and Antonio Brown were on campus. Yes, uh, Quentin Dormady would be another reason why uh, folks would remember, maybe uh, make that connection. Uh, Jim McElwain, of course, coaching at Florida a few years ago, as uh, Steve mentions, back-to-back uh, -back SEC Eastern Division Championships. Quentin Dormady, once the starting quarterback at Tennessee, leads the Chippewas with uh, 13 touchdowns and five picks, 67% completion percentage. So as you match things up, and I see this, vaunted rushing attack from Central Michigan as well with Jonathan Ward gaining 1,000 yards and 15 touchdowns. Kobe Lewis with 11 TDs. Uh, just your breakdown of some of the key matchups in this one. Central Michigan has great offense, uh, but I think one of the key matchups will have to be Central Michigan's offensive line versus Miami's Doug Costin. I think Doug Costin is the best defensive player in the MAC. Defensive tackle number 58 up front. He just causes havoc. 
I think he just single-handedly won that Ohio game that they played earlier this season just with forced fumbles in that game and getting past the line of scrimmage. He is the max version of Aaron Donald in terms of his level of performance compared to opposing offensive lines. Doug Costin is a great player on Miami's defense, and he'll be somebody who can provide disruption up front to Central Michigan's running game. You touched on it. Kobe Lewis and Jonathan Ward, one of the best running back duos in college football, and they could become the second duo this weekend to have two 1,000-yard rushers. I think Kobe Lewis is pushing on that with over 900, and Ward's already over the 1,000-yard mark. And it's been a great season rushing for Central Michigan. Jonathan Ward was great two years ago, had a slow year in his in Central Michigan's 1-11 season, but McElwain's revitalized that offense there, and Central Michigan's looked really good all season. Now, Miami is a very good defensive team. They have one outlier performance that will skew their defensive numbers and make them look like they're not as good in their averages, and that is because they gave up 76 points to Ohio State. Now, that game definitely skews some numbers, and Central Michigan has a good defense too, and that and their numbers are skewed because they have a 61 to nothing loss to Wisconsin. Yes, the 71-point loss and the 61-point loss are Two of the three losses in the FBS this season are over 60 points. So that's an interesting fact about this MAC championship. But I think these are some of the better defenses in the MAC. They don't really allow uh, much scoring. They perform pretty well in the red zone. And I think Miami has a slight edge defensively, but Central Michigan's offense is better in this game as they have a good, experienced quarterback in Quentin Dormady. They have a strong rushing attack with Lewis and Ward, and they have the best wide receiver in the mat, Khalil Pimpleton, which you just give him the ball uh, on a screen pass and he, he can work some magic in an open field. And he's also a pretty good deep threat too. So central Michigan has their offense loaded. Looking at Miami's offense, their starting quarterbacks, Brett Gabbert, the brother of former Mizzou and Jacksonville Jaguars quarterback Blaine. He's a true freshman, not the most accurate, but he has great mechanics. I know I'm probably sounding like draft analysts when they were analyzing playing Gabbard and calling him a first round pick back in the day, but I really like his throwing mechanics. He has a beautiful deep ball and can get that on target at times. Just accuracy and playing consistent has been his biggest issue so far this season, but he's a true freshman. He has so much more room to grow. Once again, Miami also has a good dual uh, running back attack with Tyree Shelton uh, leading the charge this year. And Shelton's been excellent in the running game, especially late in the season. They also have Jalen Bester, and Bester, I think, leads a team with 11 touchdowns this year. So they have a good running all around, and then they have Maurice Thomas, who they like to work into the game. Maurice Thomas is also a special teams player. He's uh, the team's kick returner and one of the better ones in the nation. First team All-Mac in that regard last year. So these teams do have some good skills position players, but they also have some of the better defenses. Not more of the exciting teams to watch in the MAC, but they're good, complete, all-around teams, which should provide us a decent MAC championship. As we uh, look at Miami and Central Michigan uh, again, as you line it up here with both teams uh, entering the ch the uh, title game at six and two, uh, Steve, would you lean one way or the other on this one? I think Central Michigan seven point favorites now. I would pick Central Michigan to win, but Miami to cover. I think this will be a close one. These teams did not play in the regular season, which it seems like so many MAC championship matchups this week, like App State, Louisiana, Memphis, Cincinnati, uh, so much Ohio State, Wisconsin. So many already played, so it's kind of nice getting two fresh faces that haven't met each other this year. But I'm going to say Central Michigan will win this game, and that's just because their offense has been on a new level lately. They ended the game. Uh, they ended the season on a three-game win streak, putting up over. 45 or more points in all three of those games, beating NIU 48 to 10, beating Ball State 49 to 40, 45 to 44, and they were down 17 in that game. And then they closed their season the best way on senior day. They beat Toledo 49 to 7 to clinch this uh, trip to Detroit. So their offense has just been on a new level recently, and they put up 38 points, I believe, in all of their MAC wins this year. And the two that they lost, their offense did not look as good against Buffalo and Western Michigan. But those were earlier in the season. I feel like they've tossed that aside and Dormady's entered his rhythm. The running backs have gotten a better rhythm. And I think McIlwain's really prepared to coach this game. 
Steve Hillwick breaking down the MAC championship game for us right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. We encourage you to join uh, Steve and the rest of the staff there, both uh, at Underdog Dynasty and also Hustle Belt on SB Nation. Steve, we appreciate you stopping by. Thank you. Appreciate it.